Hello, and welcome to this week's uh, Colorado Municipal League State House Report. I'm Megan Duller, CML Legislative Advocacy Manager. Thank you so much for joining us this week, and I'll go ahead and jump right into my bills. The first bill I want to talk about is uh, House Bill 1222. This concerns regulation of single family child care homes. Uh, this bill was heard in the Public and Behavioral Health and Human Services Committee uh, last Monday uh, and unfortunately passed unanimously, uh, even with the opposition of CML and the fire marshals and building code officials. Uh, the concern that CML has with this bill is that it removes local land use authority uh, for uh, homes, uh, excuse me, for child care homes of, that are utilizing up to 12 children. Um, and the idea being that local land use and building codes have actually been deterrents for uh, individuals to start uh, in within residential home family child care uh, businesses. And so if there is a statewide standard that, uh, that that will actually uh, help uh, encourage more of those businesses to be created. Um, CML will remain opposed to the bill. We generally oppose any bill that, that um, preempts municipal land use, uh, and we will uh, continue to fight that bill as it moves forward in the process. I will say that both parties are a big fan of the bill. Um, on, the, on the Republican side, you have a bill that deregulates uh, entities and then on the, the Democratic side, you have a bill where, you know, it's a win on, on child care and it's for working families. And that's kind of the talking points that, that the proponents are using. So that's really why that bill um, has so much support at this very moment. Certainly, uh, if you have a good relationship with your, your uh, member of the House of Representatives, please contact them and let them know your concerns. And I'm certainly happy to help out with any talking points or getting you their contact information. The next bill I want to talk about is Senate Bill 176. This is the Protecting Workers and Opportunities Act. Excuse me, I should say the Protecting Opportunities and Workers' Rights Act, also known as the Power Act. Uh, this has to do with uh, setting new rules around sexual harassment and discrimination claims um, in the workplace. CML has a number of concerns with this uh, uh, piece of legislation as introduced. Uh, and continue, it was amended in committee last night, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but we do remain opposed to the legislation. Um, the bill was heard in the Senate Judiciary Committee last night. Uh, CML testified in opposition. There were a number of amendments to the bill, uh, including one that actually adds in um, a process through the uh, Colorado Civil Rights Division before a person can go directly to court. Um, uh, if there's a harassment or discrimination alle allegation towards an employer. Um, we, are, we were supportive of that amendment. Unfortunately, there's still problematic language in the bill, uh, like including independent contractors as employees and thus covering them under this uh, new act, uh, as well as expanding uh, the definition of hostile work environment um, and another of other more minor concerns uh, in the bill. We think that there's a lot more work to be done the bill was amended, um, so the CCRD amendment was adopted. However, uh, the committee chair did lay the bill over for action with the hope of seeing more amendments, and CML is certainly hopeful that that will be the case as well. Finally, a bill I want to talk about will be heard this week, uh, Wednesday, April 7th, um, and this has to do with school discipline. Um, this is Senate Bill 182, and it makes a number of changes around uh, how how school resources, school resource officers interact with students with an on-school property. Um, C, uh, excuse me, CML's members municipalities do contract with schools for um, school resource officers. So we do have some concerns around that language. Our primary concern can be found in section six and seven of the bill, where it essentially allows certain crimes to be committed on school property um, with very little consequence, um, if any. And so we have concerns on the municipal level that there are municipal ordinance violations and other higher crimes um, that could be unenforceable should they be, uh, should they be committed on school property. See, uh, but there will be a number of amendments to the bill in committee. I'm not sure at this point whether or not that will bring CML to neutral or to drop our opposition. And we do remain opposed and plan to uh, uh, testify in opposition in committee this week. So with that, I will go ahead and kick it over to the next lobbyist, thank you. Hi everyone, this is Heather. Um, today I'm gonna to be talking about three bills. 
The first bill is House Bill 1051, Public Information Applicants for Public Employment. Um, this bill clarifies provisions of the Colorado Open Meetings Law uh, around how many finalists a local government needs to put forth in a search for a chief executive. Um, the bill changes the law to specify that a public body um, needs to publicly name one finalist, one or more candidates, excuse me, um, for the position and make their applications and materials available under the Colorado Open Records Act. This week, the legislature heard uh, House Bill 1051 on seconds and third reading in the House. Um, CML lobbied this bill extensively um, and the bill passed third reading out of the House with a vote of 50 to 13 with two excused. Um, that bill will now make its way over to the Senate for consideration. The second bill is House Bill 1105, Low Income Utility Payment Assistant contribu Contributions. Um, this bill expands the scope of Energy Outreach Colorado uh, to allow municipal water utilities uh, the option of extending uh, to their customers a low income assistance program, which is similar to the energy assistance program that um, is currently run by Energy Outreach Colorado. It also changes the funding mechanism um, of Energy Outreach Colorado. Uh, CML testified in support of the bill last week in the House Finance Committee uh, based on the Low Income Assistance Program. Uh, while the Low Income Assistance Program stayed the same, uh, the funding mechanisms portion of the bill, which doesn't impact municipalities, uh, was heavily amended during the committee. Uh, that bill passed on a vote of seven to four. And finally, House Bill uh, 1208, Natural Disaster Mitigation Enterprise. This bill creates an enterprise in statute which collects a fee on specific insurance policies um, and allows the revenue to be used by local governments for wildfire mitigation projects. A CML supporting that bill and will be testifying in the House Finance Committee on Monday, um, April 5th in the afternoon. Uh, the bill does unfortunately face an uphill battle in that committee. Um, so if you have a House representative that serves on the House Finance Committee, please reach out to them and let them know that a dedicated funding uh, source is extremely important for municipalities to be able to lessen the impact of these devastating wildfires that we see each year. So that's it for me. Have a great week. Hi, everybody. Bill Clarine here. And today I will be providing you all updates on three bills. The first bill is Senate Bill 122, which allows additional units of local governments to purchase opiate antagonists through the opiate antagonist bulk purchase fund pursuant to a standing order or protocol. Purchase of opiate antagonists through the bulk fund may result in savings for local government agencies that are currently purchasing these products through other channels. CML testified in support of this bill in the House and it also passed second reading. This bill should be heard on third reading soon and will likely be on its way to the governor's desk. The next bill I want to provide an update on is House Bill 1168. CML has been working with the sponsors on a strike below of the bill. As drafted, it required local governments with an operating budget of $500 million or more to collect data related to procurement practices and share data on which businesses they contract with. This was intended to be the first step in getting local governments to collect data to create diversity benchmarks within their procurement practices. CML worked with the sponsors on a strike below that turns this bill into a pilot program within DOLA that local governments, including municipalities, um, can opt into to get administrative support and strengthening their procurement processes. This version of the bill passed the House Transportation and Local Government Committee and will be, um, help, will be heard next in the House Finance Committee. Lastly, CML has been working with the sponsors of House Bill 1132, which concerns a limited gaming impact fund and makes changes to the prioritization of this grant. CML has secured an amendment that would require DOLA to consider the recommendations of an impartial study when handing out these grants. This bill will be heard today in the House Finance Committee. And those are my updates for this week. Please let me know if you have any questions. Bye. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan McKillop, a CML legislative and policy advocate. Here are some things I'm working on at the Capitol. Last week, CML testified in support of House Bill 1235, which closes loopholes that allow an average person to buy illegal fireworks, and House Bill 1236, which makes updates to statutes surrounding the Joint Technology Committee, the Office of Information Technology, and the Colorado Cybersecurity Council. 
Both of these bills passed out of their respective committees and are up for debate on second reading in the House today. CML also testified in support of Senate Bill 60, which makes changes to the Broadband Deployment Board and seeks to expand broadband service to critically unserved areas throughout the state. On Wednesday, the Senate Business Labor and Technology Committee heard the bill and the bill sponsor offered an amendment that would remove any changes made to the Broadband Deployment Board in the bill. The bill was laid over and the committee is set to take a vote on the amendment and bill today. CML supports the amendment that has been offered and will be fully supportive of the, of the bill once it is amended. Lastly, I wanna provide an important update on House Bill 1162, Management of Plastic Products. Last Monday, CML testified in support of the bill as introduced and specifically in support of the repeal of language that preempts local governments from passing laws curbing the use of plastic products. Unfortunately, the bill was amended by the House Finance Committee to remove the language that repeals preemption of local government's control. The bill passed committee as amended on a vote of seven to four and is awaiting a hearing in House Appropriations. CML is opposed to the bill as long as it does not include language that would allow for local government control over the management of plastic products. And we will continue to advocate to have that provision put back in the bill. That's it for me, and please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Thank you so much for joining us this week. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or any of the lobbyists that you saw in this video today. Have a great week, and thanks so much.